Okay, today we're going to pile all these logs up. We're going to pile them right up here where we were piling the uh, pallet material. That way the truck can back right in off the road and get them. That way if it rains or anything, they won't have any trouble. It's, it's easy for them just to pull up or back in, depending on the direction. Because you can, you can get back out to the main highway either way on this road. So we'll do that that way because they can't reach a lot of these and it'd just be a pain for the truck. And it just, it helps them out and they appreciate it. So we'll do that. Then we're going to put the bucket on. We're going to clean this up. We're going to open some roads up a little bit. And then when the days, when all that's done, we're going to start moving this equipment to the next job. We got to get this all packed up, the skidder and skid steer. We got to get it moved down to Mount Vernon. That way we can start down there tomorrow. We got some pretty good trees to cut down there. We got some big trees to cut. Several of them. It's a, it's a big farm. It's a beautiful farm. I'm excited to cut the job. I'm excited to have it. Then tomorrow afternoon, I've actually got to look at some timber on the Palm de Terre River. Uh, just north of Springfield, so I've got some high hopes there. And that's uh, that's today anyway, so we got quite a... It'll take us a little bit to, to get all these piled up here. We want to be careful. We don't want to tear them up or anything. don't want to tear the bark, so we got to use some caution. So let's... Uh, I keep her locked. I like to keep things locked up when I can. So let's jump in here. Oh my gosh. All right. Fire up the old skid steer and let's move some logs. Now I have a lot of people ask us about why we have multiple cut logs, which this log here, this big veneer log, I believe it's 26 feet in length. Oh, I raise up a little bit here. Yeah, we're, we're 26 feet in length with this veneer log here. Well, the reason why some of these big veneer logs that are slick like this, why we make multiple cut logs, I, people argue like, well, you're losing footage. Yeah, you, you're, you're losing a little footage, that's true. But here's the thing you gotta look at. This log, the whole way through, is staying in a high price bracket. It's staying in a really high price bracket for the length and the size and the quality. So where we're losing footage at, I mean, we're not, we're not going to lose that much anyway, but what we're doing is we're, we're keeping the same price per board foot on the whole log, the whole way through. So that's, that's what you got to look at there. You're losing footage, but the end result in logs, your footage is nice, you know. I mean, I mean you, you want your footage to be accurate, but the end result is always about money. I mean, that's, that's what matters. It's that end figure. It's not the footage. It's, it's not the average. It's that end figure, the end price. And that's what we always strive for. Yeah, we, we do. We like to keep a good average. We like to, we like for our logs to average high. But I also want that end result for my clients. I want that big figure at the end. And you'll see here, I've got... I'm trying to one-hand it here. I've got three multiple cut logs laid down here on the deck. I just laid them in there in the pile. So there's three multiple cuts, and there's one I put in there. I thought it'd hold a little better, but it didn't. Now, I think that is all of our multiple cut veneer logs. We just had those four in the multiples. But they're, like I said, they're, they're six teams. They're eight teams. They're, you know, 26, 27. I mean, they're, they're long logs, but they're all staying in the, in the big money bracket. So that's kind of the reason, the purpose behind that. Now, the one thing that I didn't do that I should have, I should have trimmed the flare. I should have rounded that butt a little better, which I'm always torn because I, I personally, I love the way the, the big, the big bell stump, the big flared stump looks. But really, they they should be rounded a lot of times, and sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. The wood was so dark in that log there. There was so much dark wood, heartwood to it, and not a lot of sap. That was one of the reasons I didn't round it. I just I like the way the stump looked, and I like to leave those stumps intact a lot of time. So that's just kind of a little bit about what we, why we do that. I know I had some people ask or mention something about it. So that kind of gives you an idea. That's that's the reasoning behind it. And there's guys that, yeah, I mean, if you do whatever you want to do. Everybody's got their own way to do things. And if you want to cut your logs, cut your veneer logs to eights, nines, tens to try to have more footage, awesome. You do that. You do what works for you. Us personally. 
I want my logs to stay in the money. I want the whole thing to stay in the big money bracket. So there's a little reason behind that. And every now and then we get an occasional order. Somebody's wanting... You'd be surprised at some of the crazy calls and emails I get for orders. There's times people want, like, that log there. They want, like, 4 by 4s or, you know, 6 by 6s or a big walnut beam in a certain length. You never know what some of the orders you're going to get is. So, if you get the order, you can just about name your price on some of that stuff because a lot of times people people don't have the means to get it a lot of times. That stuff's hard to come by. So that's a little bit about that. Well, that's them. That's, that's got them all piled up, stacked, ready to load out. Pretty good pile of logs. I wish I had them to sell again. I'd sell logs like that. <laughs> I'd cut logs like that every week if I could. Good pile of logs. Good pile of logs right there. Well throw these forks off and put the bucket on and we're gonna work on the road a little bit work on this deck or this deck area get it smoothed out it's got us right there can't go wrong with quick touch can't go wrong with quick touch doesn't seem like work at all when you're in one of these things the air on the radio going watching both ways before you cross the street here or get out on the street I've got the bucket Let's see if we can check our rear view make sure nothing's behind us which is good I don't like turning real sharp on these uh on these asphalt and concrete roads. So we'll take the chain off, we'll put the bucket on, get this slicked up, and we gotta get this thing moved to the next job so we can come back and get the skitter. Get it going. Well, that's it, guys. We got her all slicked up. I've got the forks thrown back on the cat. We're gonna kick the ramps down, get her loaded up, and get her headed to Mount Vernon. Still got her running here. Look at the old once over. Beautiful as ever. Beautiful as ever. So I ran the bucket back over the deck here, just kind of sweeped everything up, got it looking good. Took all the debris and everything, got it pushed back. Took the bucket on around there where they're going to build their house, opened that on up. Then I went back the other way with the bucket, went down into the creek bottom there, opened up some roads. So yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm happy the way it's turned out here. Man, that's just one of the benefits to having one of these little CTLs. They're just so versatile in what you can do with them. From, you know, building deck areas, to sorting out your logs, to make space, to piling logs up, to cleaning up deck areas, to road building. I mean, possibilities are endless. So it's all looking good. Ready to roll out. It's been a great job. Uh, the landowner, I met with him a bit ago, gave him his money for the job. He was extremely happy. It's happy the way it turned out, man. That makes me that makes me feel good when they're happy with the job we did, and they're happy with the money they made, and happy the way things look. Makes me know I did all right. So, let's get loaded up. It's lunchtime. I'm gonna swing through Golden City there at Cookies and get me a bite to eat because today probably the last day I gotta eat over there for a while unless I'm just venturing through. Good places to eat for lunch are hard to come by. So we'll go drop the cat off down there at Mount Vernon, get it dumped off, get the attachments off the trailer. We'll come back, we'll load up the 548, get it down there, that way we can get started first thing in the morning. So, logs, logs, logs. Good looking pile logs. Man, I'm just, I'm happy with how they stacked up, how they looked. I'm just, I'm, I couldn't be happier with how the job turned out. It was just, it was a great job of logs. It was a fun place to work, a fun area, just, it had enough enough terrain change, enough variations and variables in the job just to make it fun. You know, jobs jobs with some challenges are actually kind of fun, you know, just kind of break up monotony, things make things a little different. 
So let's get out there. We're gonna have to move the diesel, get it up on the hard surface, turn the strobes on. Not that there's a lot of traffic here, but safety first. We'll turn our strobes and hazards on. Let people know that we're in the road loading. Get loaded up and get on our way. Well, we just got done unloading the, the cat. We're gonna see if we can get turned around here. Now tomorrow, we're just gonna cut these trees here. These, uh, those standing walnut right there. And this, uh, this job down here is actually, uh, there's two different people, uh, two different people we're cutting on. One person has more trees than the other. This does not look like a good idea. But I'm known for not doing smart things, so why would we stop? So go around here. It's a good place to put a hole in the tire. A little building, but yeah, these are these are big trees. Now that one there is going to be a booger to get down. Look how hard that thing leans. All the weights out here to one side. But we're gonna got to pull a couple of them. We're gonna bring. I mean, those are big trees. My gosh, it's a big tree. But we're gonna bring these giants down tomorrow. And then we're gonna clean the brush up real good. Put it in a nice little burn pile out there. So. We're really, I mean, we might be 20 miles from where we just got done cutting, maybe, and it's uh, it's right up the highway. I mean, there's a detour up here. They're building a new bridge on 96, so we've got to cut through the country here to get back on 96 to miss the, or to, yeah, to miss the detour, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. So it's a, it's a good job. Like I said, two different landowners, two different pieces of ground, but they're they're both selling their timber together. It's kind of it was a joint deal when they called me in to look at it. Made him, made him an offer on it. Uh, we all agreed to terms, and uh, we're happy to have it. We're excited to work for him. So we're going to go back and get the skitter now. I'm sure you're not going to miss anything there. I just wanted to kind of give you a little preview of what you can expect in tomorrow's video as far as the trees. So I'm going to go ahead and get this video up and get it posted. And in the meantime, I'm going to get with the skitter while it's posting. So, guys, thanks a lot for following along and watching the channel as always. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share. All that good stuff with all of our uh, videos and social media outlets like on Facebook and Instagram. So guys, check all that out. I'm going to go get a skitter. And we will see you guys tomorrow when we bring down those big walnut trees. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.